Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Fatika. Thanks for joining us here on the Mill Creek Government Channel. You can find us really in a couple of places on Channel 9 or 92 point, excuse me, 97.2. Get that correct. It all depends where your system, how your system works. Joining me today, just for your benefit, is Gina Cloft. Gina is from the American Heart Association. We've spoken to her before. It is my heart. It is my life. And absolutely. Gina, you look great. You've taken care of yourself. Thank you. Because yep, all the advice that I have for me is <laughs> take care of yourself and your heart will take care of you to follow. I right? do. I try yeah. to live the mission, Phil. Yeah, that's really great, Gina. Um, it, it is, uh, of course, Common knowledge that heart disease is the number one killer of all Americans. Stroke ranks fourth and is a leading cause of disability in this country. But let's just deal with uh, the heart disease. Are you making any progress, Gina, with people saying, cut out this and do more of that and for goodness sake, stop smoking? Uh, how, how are you doing in those areas? Absolutely. I mean, I think that overall people are more aware and conscientious, mm -hmm. but we still unfortunately are not making the best choices. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people are ignoring the warning signs and, and just not aware yeah. of their overall risk based on family history. What's so the, what are the warning signs? So the warning signs for heart, of course, for the atypical signs, which affects men and women is the um, pressure in the chest uh, which can come and go and it is um, sometimes a crushing um, pressure that mm -hmm. will come and go and last for a few moments yeah. um, also the uh, pain in the arm the jaw area um, nausea sweating um, for women uh, which are different for men and of course this is the number one killer of women over the age of 25 uh, there's some symptoms are sometimes very different um, mm -hmm. sometimes they can feel uh, that something isn't just right that they are fatigued uh, that they um, perhaps feel like they're coming down with the flu uh, so what we recommend is to not only know the warning signs, but also to know your family history, mm -hmm. uh, know your numbers, and we can talk more about sure. that in a few minutes, but definitely um, be aware if something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. And if we hear nothing else today, to always call 911 yeah. in the event of an emergency. And I definitely want to make sure that we talk about stroke warning signs as well at some okay. point. Uh, I would like that not call 911 because a lot of people go, no, I'll drive myself to the hospital. Right. No, don't do that. Never. Okay. Because um, you're not only are endangering yourself, but you could be endangering other people right. too. Well, let's, you have the warning signs, and I think we're all pretty much aware of that, and uh, a lot of times they are ignored, for sure. But when you said know your numbers, what do you mean by know your numbers? So the American Heart and Stroke Association is very passionate about making sure that individuals are aware of their specific risk. And everyone has what we call a personal numbers, which are your blood pressure, cholesterol, mm -hmm. BMI, glucose, and of course our weight mm -hmm. and height, which uh, we, does equate to your BMI. So um, with that, uh, especially with things like blood pressure, which is the silent killer, um, we are encouraging you to have your annual physical exam. If you have biometric screenings that you can take advantage of at your employer, that's wonderful, but we that, that means we would not replace that with an annual exam as okay. well. So knowing your numbers and then knowing what those numbers mean. So is your blood pressure moderate or high and how do we control it, yeah. for example. Okay. I just had that, and probably for people of my age, because I'm be 28 next birthday. Those that are aging gracefully. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I was okay. I, I, I was I was pretty good. But my history, my I'm an only child, so my my parental history is they were okay too. You know, I, I didn't necessarily uh, get the genes of those that seem to be. Uh, in line with these heart diseases. The bad thing about me is that when I was younger, I smoked a lot. Mm. And when I was anchoring the news, I smoked more than a lot. I smoked like eating them. And finally, I just decided, mm, that's not good. I got to stop. This is just absolutely terrible. And I did. And I, I haven't smoked for years and years Good and for years. you. But smoking, I think, is still the battle that you wage in a, in a sense. Absolutely. You know? I mean, it's certainly one of the what we call controllable risk factors yeah, for yeah. heart disease and stroke. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, in this community, there are still a lot of individuals that do smoke. Uh, we have programs. There are many other great um, nonprofit health organizations that have free programs as mm -hmm. well. But, um, you know, our recommendation, of course, is if you're currently smoking to yeah. please stop. The, um, the, the price of cigarettes has gone up 
to hoping to discourage people. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the price is locally. Do you know? Is it five or six? I've something seen it pack? as much as eight dollars a pack. Ooh, a pack. Which is insane. I know that I, in New York City, it's nine something, maybe ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that, that's just yes, it is. But skirting that issue somewhat, that is, are the e-cigarettes that are making a headway. Now, what's the research, or is the data not available yet, to say mm, th these things are just as bad for you as the actual nicotine in a, not to pinpoint somebody, a Marlboro. I used to smoke Marlboros. So, right. e-cigarettes, good or bad? You know, that information, I don't have it at my fingertips, but mm -hmm. I will tell you that, you know, obviously American Heart and Stroke Association would ask you to avoid yeah. any form of cigarettes at all. So, you know, from what I recall, that's something that we're asking people yeah. not to participate in. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, just for the fact that we are role models for our next generation and any form mm -hmm. of smoking um, portrays a certain message to our yeah. youth. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to yeah. cut you off there. I, I noticed it was either, I've heard it on the radio or I've heard it, I've seen it on TV. It's a woman's voice and she's going, why don't you answer me? I'm answering the question. Why? And, and it is an ad for mm -hmm. the fact that the person is having a stroke. Right. Fast. F -A -S -T. Yes. F-A-S-T. Do you want yep. to elaborate on? Absolutely. Fast, F-A-S-T, real easy to remember. I love our new Fast campaign because it's really simple, it's very straightforward, yep. and like you said, very easy to recall. Fast is face, arms, speech, and time. So for face, obviously. Yeah, let's go the, face. Yep, face, where you're asking um, someone to smile. Um, typically, if they're experiencing a stroke, they'll not be able to smile. They'll have what we call the crooked smile. Okay. Uh, for arm, A, uh, asking them to lift both arms. And mm -hmm. typically, if they're having a stroke, they could only lift one, one. side. Okay. Uh, speech, mm -hmm. asking them to repeat simple phrases like, my name is Gina, the sky is blue. Uh, oftentimes, they won't be able to complete the sentence, or sometimes they'll open their mouth and no words will okay. come out at all. Mm -hmm. And then time is again going back to the uh, making sure that we always call 911 and noting the time mm -hmm. because with stroke there is in many cases a miracle drug that can be um, administered TPA uh, okay. that can reverse the damage of really? a stroke if given within a certain okay. time frame so it's really important if you have a loved one that's experiencing a stroke that you note the time mm -hmm. and then share that with the first responders when they arrive. Oh, that's really, really very good news. And again, let's go fast. Face, Face, arm, speech, and time. Okay, good stuff to know, good stuff to know. Um, I will be the first to admit this is like a confessional here. I, I don't really exercise as much as I should, but I exercise, I'm, I'm okay, uh, I'm okay. And I think the easiest exercise that the Heart Association would certainly agree with is walking. Yes. And are you a walker, a runner, I'm jogger? I'm a walker. Yeah. I love to run. Mm -hmm. And I also work out on a regular basis. Um, our recommendations, of course, are to walk five times a week, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, the great news about walking is that it has the lowest dropout rate of any form of exercise. And there isn't a large financial investment right. with walking. Most everyone owns a pair of sneakers. Uh, so we do encourage you to walk, to find a buddy to walk with. The American Heart Association has a great website mm. to find the fifth. 15 walking trails in our community that By are By the way, safe. What, what is that website? Walking trails. No, no, um, American Heart, Heart Org. Heart yep. Dot org. Yep, and, and then type in walking okay. or start walking, and mm -hmm. that will take you, you, you'll be able to type in your zip code, and it will take you right to the walking trails that are safe for our community, nice. which is fantastic. I, I noticed, too, that for many, many, many years, the, the Mill Creek Mall opens up very mm -hmm. early in the morning, yep. and, and people can and walk that. And I don't think you need to go and spend $300 on shoes <laughs> and, a, and a spandex outfit and any of that. You can walk around your block, right? You can. Um, both of my daughters are... Um, health conscious they're married uh, men that are also that way and one in particular whereas the fitbit is it the yes. right fitbit bracelet that monitors a whole bunch of things about you yeah right. you recommend that too well we don't endorse any specific no, I know product that. Yeah. Um, but i've heard of them i have fam friends and family that use them as, yeah. as well and have had great uh, success with them um, at the bottom line is you do not need to go out and buy any expensive equipment right. or even a Fitbit, quite frankly. Just make sure that you're making a conscientious decision to mm -hmm. exercise or walk. Um, our research, of course, shows that walking can help reduce your blood pressure, um, can certainly help you manage stress. You'll 
sleep better. You're definitely going to be able to manage your weight better. And at the end of the day, if you can walk together as a family unit, um, then you're uh, a wonderful role model for this next generation mm -hmm. who we know is at a very high risk because of childhood obesity. Yeah, that, that just going to say that plays into what you do. Um, huh. How do we get there? Why, why is childhood obesity so much on the radar today? Is it we've identified it easier or is it also the fact that we just simply are? Well, one or, one or two things the playing statistics in, that are together? that we're seeing, of course, are, are the physical inactivity as well as the gen this generation of you know the using the electronic yeah. devices, mm -hmm. the video games, and the television mm -hmm. games, and computers, mm -hmm. and smartphones are not as active, unfortunately, mm -hmm. as our, perhaps even our generation was, where mm -hmm. we were thrown out of the house, right? Uh, and come home the, when the street right, lights are turned on. Dark. <laughs> so there are definitely challenges there. The good news news is that we have so many wonderful community collaborative partners, uh, not only the schools, but also administrators, our healthcare professionals, and parents um, have been more proactive about helping mm -hmm. their children make better decisions. And I think, quite frankly, at the end of the day, we need to be the best role model. So if we are being physically active, if we're encouraging or incentivizing mm -hmm. our children or grandchildren to be active, then they will follow in our footsteps. So that's, I think, one of the most important messages is just getting them out and walking with them. Do yeah. something Eating with them. Right. Better. Yeah, watching I, portion controls. Schools yep. are moving more and more yep. toward that, I think. We too. have advocacy yeah. volunteers mm -hmm. who are working really hard to make sure that we're removing the so sugary drinks from the schools yeah. and healthier choices. You know, that is a bit of an uphill ba battle for us, oh. but one that we're not afraid is to wow. continue to pursue. Um, again, it's a collaboration between parents mm -hmm. and schools and healthcare providers to make sure that we win this battle. It is an uphill battle. A lot of uh, what Gina does, of course, is to um, promote events that help raise money for the Heart Association. And uh, through the course of the years, these events have raised money to, for example, put the first artificial heart valve uh, in, in somebody. And today, that's almost like a ho-hum, I'm going to have that done. Right. You know, it's like you're going to remove a splinter <laughs> from my finger. And you go, well, uh, you know, it always wasn't that way. Uh, it was incredibly uh, uh, paradigm shifting for sure. Um, pacemakers, uh, people have those mm -hmm. today and really kind of live normal lives. They do. You know? Yeah, pacemakers, yeah. All, all part of what it is that yeah. they do. And, and I'm leading up to, of course, the question is I think coming up a little bit uh, later on. Um, and sometime in September, and if not September, you always have events. Yeah. There's a big event coming up, so yeah, we people be aware of that. My Heart, My Life Heart Walk event yeah. at Liberty Park every September, and yeah. it's a wonderful event. Uh, we typically have about 2,000 participants from 80 local companies. Uh, it's really um, our message around physical activity. The, you know, everyone's indi invited to participate, mm -hmm. whether you donate a dollar or $500. Yeah. Uh, we have a heart healthy lunch from Subway and a kids zone area. It is a one, three or five mile non-competitive walk. So they, again, they can visit our website at heart.org or call our office 836-0013. 836. 0013. Nice. To get okay. more information Let's about supporting events, uh, community events like the walk. Um, a lot of times, depending on the program that you're watching, the TV program that you're watching, you see the ads and you know who they're targeting that program for. Um, even the most popular of shows, <clears throat> Wheel of Fortune or, or Jeopardy or anything else, and um, they, they're targeting drugs that are cholesterol lowering drugs or, or, or those kinds of things. And that's all made possible, I understand, through the efforts, the research of the Heart Association is that the money has gone toward this. My bigger question is, my harder question is, they're not cure-alls. They're not silver bullets, are they? No, and again, mm. even though the American Heart and Stroke Association mm. fund billions of dollars in research since 1949, we yeah. really want to be more of a proactive right. organization versus reactive. So yes, there's new technologies, new medications available. Um, and those are all great things. There's certainly individuals who have no choice but to have to be on the medications yeah, yeah. And, and really, quite frankly, save their lives. Yeah. Um, our hope in moving forward is that we have more individuals who um, are more proactive and take charge of mm -hmm. their own personal health so that they're not 
having to go on to the medications. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm happy to say and very proud of the work that we've done to fund the new research, the surgeries, the techniques, even how far we've come in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. People that perhaps would never have been able to live right. and have an extended life yeah. are now able to live well into their 80s and 90s oh, yeah. with pacemakers after heart surgeries, mm -hmm. etc. And I do want to mention, Phil, that please, this please. is not just a younger person's disease anymore, this, or a older, older person's, person's disease. This no. is a younger person now. We're seeing unfortunately because of the rise in juvenile diabetes, sedentary lifestyles, as well as poor eating choices, younger and younger people, 20s, 30s, 40s, that are having yeah. to have heart surgeries that are unfortunately dying from heart disease and um, ultimately uh, not being able to live a long, healthy life. Hmm. Here comes the general big question. Sure. How did we get there? Why did we allow ourselves to just keep sliding toward the precipice. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination mm -hmm. of things. Certainly, number one, we're ignoring the symptoms um, and the signs. But secondly, we've got a little complacent, you know, mm -hmm. about what we're eating and being physically active. Mm -hmm. And um, society has been a, made us a little bit lazy. You know, one of the things that I uh, laugh about when I'm out doing lunch and learns, and I use this all the time, but, you know, I work out at the the YMCA, and so we go, and you'll see people circling the parking lot three or four times trying to find that closest parking spot, right? <laughs> Doggone it, I'm because, not going to walk any farther than right, I have to to go there to the Y. Out, right? were, yeah, so I'm just that's like, a great analogy. I'm really it's kind of lazy one. about yeah. having to take those few extra steps, yep. taking the elevator, or the stairs instead of the elevator, mm -hmm. the escalator. So, um, and all of the technology that is there for us, which some of it, quite frankly, I'm glad we have, and I think it's wonderful, mm -hmm. but by the same token, it's gotten us out of having to to make physical activity a part of our regular life. Mm -hmm. um, my recommendation is, listen, I'm busy, I have teenagers, I have a full career, I have other things socially that I do, but I encourage people to do what I do, just schedule the time yeah. on your calendar, just like you would a doctor's appointment, an appointment with your boss, yeah. um, an interview with Phil, you know, get it on the <laughs> get calendar. Get it out there, get out there. Stick to it, yeah. you know, make it a priority, do it, it for you. Let's. let's I told you about my history, about, about your history. Your parents were yeah. active. Um, you know, you honestly, come from I come genes. from the meat and, and potatoes generation. Yes, so, um, sure. you know, that was something that I yeah. think, and we also re were rewarded with candy. And, and um, mm -hmm. so I think that unfortunately, although there isn't a lot of family history yet, um, I actually lost a coworker in the year 2000 uh, from heart disease. Okay. So it is a very personal thing yeah. for me. But I think that I work out so much because I see the suffering mm -hmm. that a lot of our heart patients go through and I hear them say I really wish I would have made better yeah. decisions yeah. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Had I done that perhaps I wouldn't have to be in the hospital. I wouldn't have to be on all these medications. I wouldn't have had to have had three heart surgeries yeah. by the time I turned 70. Let's so these are all things to really think about and be accountable for now before it's too late. I'd like to broach this area and I don't want to make you uncomfortable but Not somewhere in there Let's of course we all go well, but the insurance will take care of it, you know? And you go, mm, maybe not so much anymore today, you know? Uh, that's, that's changed a lot. Uh, it's okay. And before we get to the insurance question, um, part of what's driving the cost up is that people run into the emergency room for everything that's wrong, and then that drives the cost up. But let's just keep it general with, with the insurance. Um, how do you respond to people that say, well, you know, I have good insurance. It'll take care of it for me, the open heart or the, the, the yeah. drugs. Uh, sure, sure. Well, I mean, everybody wants that, you know, simple solution, the mm -hmm. pill that's going to fix yeah. everything. Yep. But to be honest with you, um, you know, that really isn't the answer. And I think that, you know, um, having watched individual have to make decisions about paying $800 in medications in a month or pay their mortgage. You know, those wow. are the kinds of decisions that we right. don't ever want to have to right. make. Right. Um, and I don't care if you've got the best insurance in the world. And if you do, that's fantastic. But by the same token, your quality of life mm -hmm. will not be as good if you're not exercising, eating the right foods, and being proactive about your health mm, now. You're such a nag, though, Gina. Come on, you know. <laughs> Come on. We all know that, you know. 
What are those three things you want me to do again that you're <laughs> nagging me about? Be proactive. Be eat the proactive right foods. about your health and wellness. Yeah. Be, you know, know your family history, yep. know your numbers. So let's talk about something. You could be in the best physical health of your life. Perhaps you work out on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You're eating all the right foods. You know your family history, but you haven't been to the doctor and you haven't had your cholesterol, your blood pressure checked. Those things um, can be frightening yeah. because blood pressure, for example, is what we call the silent stalker or the mm -hmm. silent killer. Mm -hmm. So let, it's important to know. Let me throw this into the mix there uh, as, as the man on the set here. I would think that men are worse at doing this than women. Uh, Curtis is walking around behind us. Uh, Cody's back in the directing there. And Bill's over there. And I'm kind of thinking that guys are going, I'm okay. I don't need to go to the doctor. It's, it's, I'm in, I'm, you want to arm wrestle? I'll show you how good I am. Do, do I have a good point there? Men are more inclined you not do, but to you know, be there. There's the, there, you absolutely are right. And certainly, you know, I think it's about changing behaviors and mm -hmm. changing the th thought about, you know, t living today for mm -hmm. tomorrow, sort of. But the other thing that's interesting about that, Phil, is that women are the ones that are dying because we're ignoring and not recognizing our warning signs. Really? Number one killer of women over the age of 25. Yeah. One out of every three women dies from heart disease. How can they ignore it? Um, because they don't recognize it. And that's why our Go Red for Women campaign is so important mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. a lot of women are expecting that crushing chest yeah, that, pain or the arm. Like the man. And that doesn't always happen with Ooh. women. Sometimes we are fatigued. Uh, perhaps we usually have a lot of energy and then all of a sudden we just aren't able to even get up a flight of stairs. Okay. Um, perhaps even we have been misdiagnosed. Uh, sometimes sure. if a young, healthy woman in her 30s or 40s comes into a family physician, and they don't recognize the mm -hmm. warning signs, uh, they may be diagnosed with having something else. Um, mm. So it's important as women that we not only know the warning signs, but we know our family history and we know our numbers. Okay, this is Gina Cloft, and she is with the American Heart Association. She's been associated with them for many, many years. They have a big event that's a, a walk. It's on, down on the Bayfront, I think, correct? Yes, yeah, Liberty Bay Park. Front, Liberty Park, and other than just the simple organizing events that they have, which you're, I think you're all aware of, is the fact that they advocate to really go out of business is what you'd like to do is, you know, not have to come and, and, and tell people about the warning signs and, and the heart disease and the stroke and the diabetes and the, uh, the obesity and the lack of energy and the lack of um, just getting up out of the house and, and doing something besides playing a video game or worse yet, I'm going to make my point here, playing the video game on your cell phone ad nauseum <laughs> ad infinitum because you're bored with the meeting at work or you're bored with whatever and you go play let's say candy crush that's the big one okay oh, yeah. <laughs> let's take candy crush get off of candy crush and go do something that's really good for you like walk exercise ride a bike etc Gina, we've got a couple of minutes left i just had to get that thing yeah, in there because no, the, i great. think you're good right stuff. it's that cell phone good thing is, is just you know Kind of driving people into a chair like this and sinking yeah. down and, and, you know, just. So, the Heart Association, uh, my heart, my life. You got a couple of minutes here. Give me your best pitch. Tell the audience you should be doing and you should not be doing. <laughs> And, and, and the signs of a stroke, that's yeah, very good. Signs absolutely. of a stroke. Yep. So, Let's take signs of a stroke first. Absolutely. So, again, fast, F as in face, A, arm. S speech and T time. So looking for that, recognizing that, making sure that you um, note the time and always call 911 in the event of an emergency. And you know, I just want to re uh, reiterate what you're saying, the physical inactivity component, when we talk about the mm -hmm. controllable versus a non-controllable risk factor, so non-controllable age, sex, and family history, but controllable is where I get so excited because that means we're so much potential to fight these horrible diseases. So things like quit smoking cessation, uh, becoming more physically active, um, knowing our numbers, you know, getting, um, making sure that we're eating healthier and mm -hmm. making better decisions. Mm -hmm. Those are all things that are critically important to reducing our risk, but also extending our life. And I got a great two for one deal for you today. <laughs> so if you're a bargain okay. shopper, I love this. So for every two hours, Hours of physical, vigorous physical activity. So I don't care if you like to run, uh, if it's you know aerobics, if it's swimming. Do two hours of physical, vigorous activity, and you gain one hour of life expectancy at the end of your life. Is that two hours a day? Two hours. Two hours. You, if it's two hours a week, then a week? good for you. Then you're getting fifty-two. Well, we have to say goodbye because I'm going to start exercising <laughs> right now. Right. You know. 
So that's Curtis has started our buddy. He's behind that's that a, camera over there. He's doing push-ups. That's a heck of a deal. For yes, anybody who likes of Oregon, I mm -hmm. really encourage it. Find something that you're passionate about. Find a buddy that will keep you accountable to your exercise yeah. routine yeah. and stick with it. It'll, it, you'll be glad you did. Gina, always good advice. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're, you're a pleasure. You're just a fountain of knowledge and, and such good knowledge. And to you, thank you for joining us. Always good advice from the American Heart Association and Gina Kloft. Until next time, take care. I'm Phil Fatika. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.